This week we're continuing to use MetPy to explore some basic concepts and we're going to get into a little bit of dynamics, talking about divergence. What is it? How can we visualize it? And how can we get a more intuitive feel? Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to talk about divergence. You may remember from calculus or from your dynamics courses that divergence is the volumetric density of flux at a point, which probably didn't mean a whole lot to you at that point and may still not be intuitive. That's a lot of words surrounding what at its core is not that complex of a concept. If we're thinking about air, expanding away from itself, uh, say we're heating air or we've got some sort of outward flow, that the velocity field will point out from the point that we're heating or that we're expanding from. And that has a positive divergence value. If air is coming towards somewhere in common, that's going to have a negative divergence value or some might think of it as convergence. Now what we're doing here, of course, is just assuming simple 2D planar divergence. We're not getting into any upward or downward motion here. But let's make some simple velocity fields and plot them up. This is something that I've often seen drawn on chalkboards in classrooms, but it's a little more meaningful to me if we can put some numerics behind it, and it gives students a chance to say, well, what if I double the wind speed, or what if I shift these vectors around a little bit? This would be a great application for a GUI where students could actually drag and arrange wind vectors. That's a little beyond what we want to do on a MetPy Monday. All right, so first we're going to do our imports. We know we're going to be doing some calculations. Import MetPy.calc. We're, of course, going to be plotting. And I'm going to import NumPy as NP. We always use NumPy. And we need units. Now, since we're going to want to make several different velocity fields, I'm going to create a function to plot divergence, and then we'll call it with those different fields. So I'm going to define a function called plot divergence. It's going to take wind speed and wind direction. And for now, we're just going to make it work with a 5x5 five five grid. We could, of course, make this a little more generic if we chose, though. And we are going to need U and V components. So first off, we use MetPy's wind components function, which takes wind speed and wind direction and gives us U and V back. Calculating divergence is as simple as calling the divergence method on U and V. And notice we need to provide a grid spacing in X and Y. In our case, we're just going to choose 10 kilometers for dx. This could be a parameter that you let students set or play with, though. And dy, we're going to do the same thing. All right, so we've calculated divergence. Let's plot it. I'm going to create a figure and an axis object. Now, I want to plot my vectors, which is relatively easy, using axe.quiver. And we're going to need to tell it an x and y location for these, as well as their u and v components. And I can tell you right now that I'm going to need to specify a z order to get them up on top of everything else that we're plotting. Remember z order is just how high in the stack of things we're putting on a plot is this, so let's make sure that it plots above everything else. Now divergence is a scalar field, so I'm going to want to shade my plot. And we've got a video on what's the difference between p color, p color mesh, and im show. I encourage you to go watch that if you don't remember. We're going to use p color here. And for that we're going to need a grid of our coordinate locations. We could of course manually create it, but using mesh grid is quite a bit faster just for typing. Alright, so that creates an x and y grid for us. 
We're using that for our axe.quiver. I'm going to set my limits to be a little bit bigger than our area, just so the plot looks a little more sensible. I'm going to save a handle to my P color call, X, Y, our divergence so on a plot. I'm going to specify a minimum value of minus 5, a maximum value of 5, and the color map that I want to use is cool warm. We need to put a color bar on. That color bar needs something to work with, which is going to be our handle back to that P color instance. All right, so we think we've got a function. We see that we've got a problem already, and that's a syntax issue. All right. So let's create a very simple field. Wind speed is numpy ones, five by five. And then we'll multiply those ones by 20 meters per second. So this creates a uniform grid of 20 meter a second winds. And the wind direction, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And they're going to be 180 degree winds. Okay. Now we'll call our plot divergence function with wind speed and wind direction. All right, we have a misplaced parenthesis. And here we go. So we've got a uniform wind field and we would not expect any divergence in a uniform wind field. The velocity and direction are identical everywhere, so we should have a zero divergence. If you think about doing that operation in your head, think back to your calculus, we see that indeed we do get that zero divergence. Okay, so let's create a more interesting wind field now. I'm going to copy this. It's always good to do something that you think you know the answer to, right? Uh, that way you can make sure that your code is working and then your code can help you understand more things that you're not understanding right now. Okay, so I'm gonna create a very simple wind field. Remember, we're starting at the bottom left corner here, not as we're typing it in order, because we're starting at zero, zero. Okay, so five elements wide. And we'll go with 22 meters per second here at the bottom, which is the top of the plot. Don't forget our units. All right, so what do we expect here? We have 6, 11, 16, 19, and 22 meters a second as rows along our plot. So go ahead and think about in your head what this should look like and then run the cell. So we have winds that are increasing in speed as we go along a streamline here. So we would expect divergence, and that is indeed what we see. We have divergence with positive values. Okay, let's take this same block of code, and now let's add a little bit more complication. Let's do increasing and decreasing speeds, both laterally and vertically. And then I'm going to copy these rows into here so we have a symmetric pattern. All right, so what do we see? We see here we've got 
positive divergence values where we have faster wind here than here, and negative values where we have a faster wind coming up on a slower wind. So we think this makes sense. We think we can understand that. Finally, let's play with wind direction. So finally, let's play with wind direction. So I'm going to copy this block. I'm going to come down here to wind direction and create an array. And I'm going to put in some values for wind direction and wind speed. OK, so if I leave the wind speeds the same, but modify the directions, well, in this case, we get what looks like quite a mess. And this is one of those cases where it's very important to read the warnings and think critically. So I know what this should look like because I typed the data in. It's not quite what I expected it to look like. And I get a warning that says input over 12.56 radians. Ensure proper units are given. Did I give any units for wind direction? I did not. So we assumed that they're in radians. The computation ran. I got a plot. But if I wasn't thinking critically about this, I might have just interpreted that. If I put degrees in, now suddenly I get something that looks a little bit more realistic for a wind field that I could dream of happening. And it looks like more what I expected when I typed the numbers in. So we have this interesting convergent divergent flow and we see a nice symmetrical pattern of divergence values. So if you're an instructor, I encourage you to use tools like this to help your students think critically about some of these concepts that they may be struggling with. And if you're a student, this is a great thing to do to remind yourself of the basics and to just sit down and play with it to get a little bit of an intuitive feel of how some of these operators work. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.